We've been looking all summer on the three pillars of Christian growth, and they are spirit, soul, and body. You have to understand how God created us, how God wired us, and how God made us to live and to experience his very best, God's plan, God's program. So we feed our spirit, we renew our soul. Your soul is not your spirit. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then you control your flesh or your body. When we do that as a Christian, we can't help but grow. We can't help but move forward, overcome obstacles, reach opportunities, and live and have God's best. So we're going to look at it here, break it down. Are you ready? And the very God of peace, the very God of peace. So we found out in our series all summer, if you want real peace, you're going to find it in God. Not drugs, not alcohol, not sex, not status, not salary. You're going to find real peace and you find it in God. And so he's the God of peace. We said two weeks ago, that word peace is shalom. Pastor, that doesn't mean anything to me. That's a Jewish thing. Oh, it should. Because shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So what does that mean? That means that God can restore broken lives. God can restore broken marriages, broken families, broken dreams, broken emotions, that he's a restorer. He's a restorer. And the peace of God will restore and bring you back to what God created and called and designed you to do. Life is tough, and life can damage. Life can hurt. Life can hold, life can hold back. But when we come to God and we realize that he's the God of peace, he's the God of shalom, that when I find God, he can bring back into my life, heal and restore nothing broken. Man, can you imagine going through life and not being dysfunctional? Can you imagine going through life and you're not addicted to some, some damaging drug or routine or habit? Can you imagine living a life that's whole and complete? That's God's will for us. He's the God of peace, the God of shalom, nothing broken, nothing missing. So if there's something missing in your life today and you found out that sex, status, salary isn't, isn't doing it, isn't meeting the need, you'll find it in God. You'll find it in the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus Christ. And he can restore, he can heal, and he can fill up those empty spots in your life. Emptiness in our life attracts negativity. So he's the God of peace. And then look at this. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. It's called sanctification. Sanctification. It's a process. You know, you might have heard of justification. Justification is different than sanctification. Glorification is different than sanctification. When you and I get born again, justification takes place. When we give our life to God and we accept Jesus Christ, our body doesn't get saved, our mind doesn't get saved, but our spirit gets saved. Am I right? We get a brand new spirit, okay? That's called justification. And you say, Pastor, those are too big of theological terms. I don't understand it. Let's make it simple. Justification means just as if you never sinned. He takes our sin, he casts it into the sea of forgetfulness, he puts up a sign and says, no fishing here. He's a good God, amen? He said he'd remember our sin no more. He would remember our sin no more. That's justification. But once we do that, once we become a new creation, once we give our life to God, then sets in the process of called sanctification. Sanctification is a process that lasts until you die as a Christian or when he comes back. So say it with me. Sanctification is a process. So, so you and I, we talked about a couple weeks ago, we've got to get in the process, right? We've got to get in the program if we want God's results. You know, as I told you, you know, I work out with my sons. We do CrossFit. I have a trainer. We, we have, uh, have had a nutritionist that puts us uh, on these macros. Puts us on an app on our phone where we can have so many carbs, so much fat, so much protein every day. And they say, as long, Dave, as long as you stay with the program, 
as long as you stay with the process, you'll, you'll have the fat percentage you want. You'll have the muscle tone you want. But if you get off the program, don't blame us. Whoa. So same way with God. If we'll get in the program, sanctification. If we'll get in the process and be a partner with God, collaborate with God, participate with God, then God will work a work in our life that will be amazing, that will be incredible, that will be adventurous, that will be overcoming. So sanctification, here's what it means. I looked it up in my 1828 dictionary, the word sanctification. It said to set apart, to appoint. So you are an appointment. Don't let your life be a disappointment because God wants your life to be an appointment. I want to run that by one more time. The world may say you're a disappointment, but not in God's eyes. In God's eyes, you are an appointment. You have been appointed a task, a calling, an assignment, a job, the will of God, the plan of God. So sanctify means to set apart and to appoint, to set apart and to appoint for a divine purpose. How cool is that? We all have a purpose, right? We're a purpose-driven church. We lead people to a God who's for them and help them discover his purpose for their life. So sanctification means to set apart, to appoint, to purge, to cleanse for a divine purpose. Say it with me. I have a divine purpose. I am not a mistake. I am not a disappointment. I have a divine purpose. Oh, my goodness. Can we give God thanks for that? Come on, let's have a praise break. Glory to God. All right? So the very God of peace sanctify you, set you apart, appoint you, that purging and cleansing process to prepare you for divine work. He said, I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body, there's the three parts, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless until Jesus comes back. So that tells me God's interested in our spirit, God's interested in our soul, and God's interested in our body. He's our healer today. He doesn't want you to live in pain. He doesn't want you to live in disease and sickness. He doesn't want you to have a troubled mind. How many people have a troubled mind and are taking medication for their anxiety and their disorders? God's will is not that. God's will is that we be whole, a whole person not dysfunctional, not fragmented, not broken. God's will is that you and I be a whole person, that you and I live an overcoming life, that we face obstacles and not run, but run towards them, whip them, come out on the other side, a winner in Jesus' name. Amen? All right, next slide, guys, next slide. Okay, so here's what we said. Our spirit, we feed it. Okay, that's the program, that's the process, but how does it work, Pastor? We feed our spirit. And the voice of our spirit is our conscience. Number two, our soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, you renew that. You renew that. So we feed our spirit and renew, renew our soul. Number three, our body. Our body, we're to control that. We're to crucify that. Pastor, are we to get on a cross and be nailed to a cross? What does that mean? No. How you crucify your flesh is simply this way. Tell it no. And the voice of our body is our feelings. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. Next slide, guys. Next slide. So how do we feed our spirit? I was interviewed yesterday on a podcast, and they said to me, you know, Pastor Blunt, how do you overcome obstacles in life? How do you face challenges? I know you have. How do you overcome and face challenges and beat them? I said, simply with a strong spirit a strong spirit. So the Bible says in Proverbs 24, 10, if I faint in the day of adversity, it's because my spirit is weak. So if I make my spirit strong, I won't faint. I won't quit. I won't give up. I won't give in. I'll stand tall. I'll be courageous. I'll face the giant, whip it, and come out a winner on the other side. Amen? So how do you feed your spirit? I'm going to give you several ways. They all start with the letter R. Let's look at it, guys. Next slide. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law, that would be the Bible, 
shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, keep the word coming out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate. Everyone say meditate. Okay? So you feed your spirit through meditating on the word of God. When your Bible, you read it, and then you stop and think about what you read. Then you journal what comes to your mind. So you meditate there in day and night. Day and night would speak of a routine, a process, a habit. Not just once in a while, but a habit, a routine, a process. And then observe to do all that's written therein, and then you will make your way prosperous. Is it scriptural for me to tell you God wants to prosper you? Yes, it's right there. And then you have good success. Is it scriptural for me to want you to be a success in the marketplace? Yes, it's right there. Next slide, guys. So number one, we feed our spirit and we get stronger and we grow when we meditate in the word. To meditate means personalize. You personalize scripture. How do you meditate? You visualize. So you visualize, you verbalize, you know, you uh, visualize and verbalize, you meditate on the word of God, you personalize, and that's how you meditate in the word. That will feed your spirit and make it stronger than your struggle. Next slide, guys. Next slide. Number two, you obey the word. You obey the word. When we read it and then obey it, our spirit gets stronger. Every time I obey God, I get stronger. Every time I disobey God, I get weaker. Next slide. Number three, you do it. We're not a hearer, but we're a doer at Church on the Rock. Make it simple so I can apply it and do it. I'm not blessed in going to church. I'm blessed in going to church, hearing the word, obeying it, and applying it. Then I'm blessed. Number four, how I feed my spirit. I make it final authority. I make it final authority. A few years ago, I had a problem with my health and my body. I went to a doctor, a born-again, spirit-filled, a Simmers of God doctor. And he said to me, you're going to have to live with it the rest of your life, Pastor. We're sorry to say, surgery won't help you. We can't help you. Give you some exercises, but you're just going to have to live with it. I said, thank you very much. But he was a believer. He knew what I was saying. But I said, whose report? Am I going to believe? The word, what does the word say? And guess what? God healed me. I don't have that problem. It's gone. It's gone. God did it. God healed me. He's my healer. Make the word final authority that feeds your spirit. Number five. Next slide, guys. Declare who you are, what you have, and what you can do. Don't talk about who you're not. Don't talk about what you can't do. Don't talk about what you don't have. That only makes your spirit weaker. When you talk about what you can't do, who you aren't, what you don't have, it weakens your spirit. Read the book of Job. But when you declare who you are, what you have, what you can do, it energizes your spirit being. Scripture for that, Philemon, chapter 1, only one chapter, verse 6. The communication of your faith is energized when you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ. When we talk about can't afford it, can't do it, never have it, can't go there, can't make that happen, that weakens your spirit. But when you say, I can do all things through Christ, he meets all my needs, he causes my hand to prosper, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, he is my refuge, he is my rock, he is my shelter, he is my high tower, I run to him and I am safe. It strengthens my spirit. Praise bait. Come on, give him a praise as the guys go. All right, so that's how you feed your spirit. Make it simple, make it plain, and that's how you do it. Now, how do we renew our mind? Your mind is not your brain. Two different things. How do you renew your mind? Our life is determined by the thoughts that we think. As a person thinks, so are they. My thinking becomes my believing. 
My believing becomes my behavior. My behavior determines if I win or lose. So we don't want a troubled mind. We want a trained mind. Think on these things, right? We want an intentional thought life, not a random thought life. We're not going to let the devil have any real estate in our head. Come on, somebody. We're going to cast down every negative thought, defeated thought, depressing thought, suppressing thought, oppressing thought, sickness thought, lack thought. We're not going to give it any real estate in our head. Not a troubled mind, but a trained mind. Next slide, guys. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we renew our mind, your mind? Thoughts determine what I believe. What I believe determines my behavior. My behavior determines if I get the raise or I don't, if I have the relationship or I don't, if the doors open or if they don't, if I get favor or I don't, if I receive or I don't, my behavior dictates the level and the life that I live. It's not what happens to us. It's how we respond, our behavior to what happens to us. Am I helping anybody? Let's go to the NLT, guys. Let's just go to the NLT, okay? Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Wow. But let God change you. Change you into a new person. How are you going to change me, God? By changing the way you think. God says, I'm going to change the way you live. I'm going to change the way you react and respond. I'm going to change your life by changing the way you think. My life doesn't change until I change the way I think. Then you will learn to know God's will for your life. Look at that family. Then you'll know God's will for your life. Without renewing my mind, I'll miss God's will. That was worth coming to church, brushing your teeth and flossing. Without renewing my mind, I'll never know my purpose. Without renewing my mind in the word of God, I'll never know the will of God for my life. And God's will for your life, someone needs to hear this, is good. Don't be afraid of the will of God. Don't argue with God. Don't run from God. This is for somebody. The, the will of God is good. It's pleasing and it's perfect. The perfect match. Amen. Next slide, guys. All right. That you put off the concerning the former way of life, the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust and desires, okay? So when we get born again, our desires don't change at much at the very beginning. He put a new spirit and a new heart. He took out the hard heart, put it in the soft heart, but now we got to reprogram. We got to rewire to think the thoughts of God and the desires of God. Next verse, verse 23, be renewed or being renewed in the continuous tense in the spirit or attitude of your mind. Oh my goodness. So what I think, I believe, and how I believe comes out through my attitudes. So be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So how do I get rid of the old Dave Blunt and get the new Dave Blunt that God wants? How do I get rid of the stinking thinking? How do I get rid of the lustful thoughts, the wrong desires, the wrong habits? How do I get rid of that? I'm born again, but my flesh ain't. I'm born again, but my thought life aren't. How do I change? How do I get rid of the old me and I take on the new nature? By the renewing of your mind. Next verse, verse 24, that you put on. Everybody say, put on. A while ago, I said, put off. So I put off and I put on. How? By the renewing of my mind in the word of God. Okay, how do I do that? Next slide. How do I renew my mind? Four words, letter R. Y'all still with me, family? Okay, so this is how we feed our spirit. We talked about it. Now we're going to renew our mind. So we have a troubled mind, spaced out mind, burnt out mind, angry mind, bitter mind, but that your mind is the mind of Christ. They have the mind of Christ. How do I do that? Number one, repetition. 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 Can you say that with me? Repetition. I can't renew my mind if I do it just once a week. If I do it twice a week, it's going to take repetition. Now, all you psychologists out there, you know this concept. Repeated behavior builds pathways in your brain. Repeated behavior 
builds pathways in your brain. So if you want to change a behavior or habit, you build a new pathway to replace the old pathway. You all know that I have a, uh, a dog. Her name is Princess Anna. And uh, I walk her every morning and I get my coffee. I get my Bible and playing and I'll walk her. We live out in the country, have a few acres and I have a path. And, you know, I was walking that same old path with her. And guess what? I was building a path. It was worn out there. The, the grass had left and I had built a path. I got to thinking, I thought, man, I don't want that path there in the yard and around the fence. So what did I have to do? Create a new path. So I got off the old path and began to walk a new path with my dog. Same way, through repetition, through repeated behavior, you get rid of the old past in your brain, desires, lust, addiction, pornography. Pew Research says Christian men, 70% are addicted to pornography. Not in our church. Well, you guys better say a bigger amen than that. <laughs> How do you get rid of pornography? We're going to talk about that the next two weeks on the flesh. How do you get rid of that? you got to build a new pathway. You build a new pathway. You go off the old pathway, and you create a new pathway, and through repetition, you replace the old with the new. And no longer are you driven with old desires and old lust and old temptations. Number two, how do you renew your mind? Through resistance. Through resistance. You guys are awesome. I hope I'm helping you. Okay. Uh, resistance. Resistance. We renew our mind through resistance. Okay. So repetition and resistance. We won't go there. We don't have time. But this is crucial, y'all. This is crucial, my beloved. This is crucial, Church on the Rock, is that when you resist a negative thought or thought that doesn't line up with the will of God, that's contrary to the Bible, you've got to resist immediately. You've got to resist immediately. I'm going to go back to the men. Psychologists tell us that, guys, if you can say no to pornography when you're tempted with it, if you can say no and do it for 15 minutes, you've got it won. You've got it beat. If you can say no and keep saying no for 15 minutes and you do that repeatedly, psychologists tell us it creates a new path in your brain and you're no longer addicted to whatever that addiction was. Amazing, isn't it? So through repetition, you renew your mind through resistance. This is when Jesus came back from the wilderness and the devil came to him with thoughts. Remember that? And what did Jesus do? Resisted immediately, quoting a scripture. That's spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is your thought life. Joyce Myers, The Battleground is Your Mind. Got a great book. The Battleground is Your Mind. Spiritual warfare is your thought life. Spiritual warfare is your thought life. And if you learn to resist quickly, you'll defeat the enemy and you'll cast that thought down. Number three, third R, response, response. And that's where I was just saying there, do it quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through five. We won't read it, but it says, take captive every thought that contradicts the Bible. How do you take it captive? By speaking the word. You take it captive through the law of replacement. By immediately when that thought comes, you don't wonder, you don't wander, you don't procrastinate. You immediately and quickly quote scripture and you take that thought captive and it has no power over you. Let's do patty cake. Let's give the Lord a big praise. Come on, can we? We're about done. Number four, a right attitude. I'm going to close with this. How to renew your mind. Repetition, resistance, respond with the word and the right attitude. James 1, 21, here's what it says. Wherefore, lay apart all sin and receive. Everyone say receive. Receive with meekness. Meekness there is humility. Receive with humility. What is that? A teachable attitude. The engrafted word of God, look at this, which is able to save your soul. Not spirit, 
not body, but soul. Notice our soul needs saving. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Notice this is James, the half-brother of Jesus. This is James. He's the pastor at Jerusalem. The church is 35, history says 35,000 members in this church. They're church folk, but yet their soul needs saving. But yet they need every day to feed their spirit, renew their soul, and control their body. In Jesus' name. And when we do, we overcome obstacles, adversity, we rise above it, and we live the life of wholeness, completeness, shalom, peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, the winner's life. I want to thank you for watching the program today. Before we go off the air, I want to ask you the most important question I could ask you. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you turned your life over to Him? If not, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. Also, you're watching, you say, Pastor, I'm already a Christian. I'm already a believer. But there are things in my life that I need to change. There are some things in my life I need to reset and get right, get on track. Pray for me. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now, right there where you're at. Just say it with me. Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me and He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer, you're a brand new person on the inside. We've been talking about this for this series on the three pillars of Christian growth, spirit, soul, and body. We've been talking about what just happened to you. Your spirit became alive and brand new. Your body didn't, your soul, your mind, your thoughts didn't, and now you gotta get on a program on how to grow. We've been talking about that. If you miss any of the programs, go to our website and you can go back and listen to all of them. If you've enjoyed the broadcast, tell a friend. Until next week, don't forget, God is for you. Thanks for joining us through the God is for you experience. Here at Church on the Rock, we are doers of the word and we don't want you to be just a spectator. We want you to be a participator. If this teaching has been a blessing for your life, we invite you to do a random act of kindness and share this experience. A random act of kindness can be paying for someone else's coffee or checking in with a family member, friend, or coworker and spreading this week's teaching. By sharing this experience with them, you're making a way for them to receive the blessing of this powerful teaching. You can also invite them to visit our website where we're continuously adding tools to grow strong in our faith. Here you'll also find current and upcoming events to build community and stay connected with everything that's happening at Church on the Rock. We want you to know that we love you, care for you, and constantly pray for you. We'll see you next time. Until then, don't forget, God is for you.